and welcome to another Red Gaming Tech Gaming News Special and me, Amata. In this video we talk about the Dark Souls DLC, Atorias of the Abyss, and the items that it gives you and a little bit of information about each item. First up is the Dark Silver Tracer, which is a dagger weapon that can be obtained after killing Atorius. And he is a knight who, by the sounds of it, is pretty difficult to beat indeed. As well as that, we have the Gold Tracer, which is a fast-hitting scimitar that can be obtained after killing Knight Atorius as well. So you get a couple of items for killing that particular boss, which kind of gives you a little bit of an idea as to how difficult he is. The Gold Tracer requires 25 dexterity to wield and has 300 bleed damage. As for the Dark Silver Tracer, it requires 25 dexterity to wield and has an S rank dexterity modifier. Next up is the Ulysseal Ivory Catalyst, and please forgive me if I pronounce that first word incorrectly. I don't believe I've ever come across a word even remotely like that before, so please do excuse me on that. And this item is a Sorcery Catalyst, which can be purchased from Dusk, as well as the Mushroom Vendor in Sanctuary Garden. And the Ivory Catalyst is a powerful tool for mages. It has a magic adjustment of plus 180, and it is apparently fairly easy to obtain. So, not quite a challenge like the gold and the dark silver tracers, which sound like pretty tall orders indeed of having to defeat that boss, but it's nice to know they've got a little bit of a mix here going on in this Dark Souls DLC. Next up though is Go's Great Bow, which is obtained upon returning to Her Hawkeye Goth, sorry about the pronunciation there, don't know what happened to my voice, after the player has killed a Calamite. This bow is huge and requires 27 strength as well as 20 dexterity to wield. It is quite powerful though and has a decent range of 55. So despite the pretty insane requirements that your character has to fulfill to wield this particular bow, it sounds like it's more than worth it even if you do have to defeat a black dragon in order to even get close to getting your hands on it. Next up is the armour that comes with the DLC, and the first on the list is the Bloated Head, which is a rare drop from the Bloated Warrior enemy. It's apparently quite tough to come by, but it's also supposedly a little bit useless. Its only benefit is a large poison resistance, and aside from that, the stats of this item are not all that great and not really worth the effort of defeating this brand new enemy which can be found in the Ula Seal and in the Darks of the Abyss. Next up is the Bloated Sorcerer Head, which again is a rare drop, but this time from the Bloated Sorcerers found in Ula Seal. And again, please do forgive me if I'm butchering the pronunciation of that. Again, this item is pretty useless. It offers some magical defense and has above average poison resistant, and apparently is not all that attractive to look at, and isn't really worth it in terms of the other stats that it has, which is a little bit of a shame, but I suppose not every item in this DLC can be a winner. Next up, however, is the Knight Atorius Armour, which is a powerful set of armour which can be obtained from Domnor of Xena after, of course, you have killed a Knight Atorius. And supposedly this armour is very good for melee characters, it offers high physical resistance with a pretty nice magic resistance as well. Each piece will offer you poise, making a total of 36, and only has 24.8 load, and is actually one of the lightest sets in the medium heavy armour category. Each piece, though, must be bought from Domnor of Xena for 20,000 souls. Each piece can be upgraded, though, five times using Twinkling Titanite. So that, so far, sounds like the most beastly of all the items, including this DLC. But we have a few items that are left to go, so we'll see if that remains on the top. Next up on our armour list is the Guardian Armour, which is scattered throughout Royal Wood and is pretty much protected on all four pieces by various groups of enemies which the player will have to kill pretty much all of in order to obtain all four pieces of this particular armour set. 
which is very heavy indeed, coming at 45 load, and the player will have to have some pretty nice stats to wear it at all, seeing as that you will have to have an endurance of 25 to help minimise the impact on your running speed. The item Havel's Ring will go a long way in order to keep your character mobile when you are wearing this particular suit of armour. It is worth the wait, however, the entire set will give you 98 poise and also has high defence values all around. Fire, lightning, physical and magic all get pretty nice defensive buffs and bleed resistance will also increase by over 100. So a pretty damn nice set of armour indeed. Definitely enough to sit up the top with the Knight Atorius armour, I would say, personally. Next up is the final list item in our armor list, sorry, which is the Cleansing Great Shield. This item can be found deep within the abyss and has very high resistances. None are 100, but magical, physical, and fire damage reduction is set to 80%. Lightning is a little bit lower at 70, but it has a really nice stability rating, seeing as a great shield, as the stability is set at 77. Next up is usable items, and there's only three on this particular list, so we're almost done with our little DLC rundown here. The Silver Pendant can be found in Ulusil Township, and the item itself will deflect dark magic, which is pretty nice indeed, and will be useful during the Manus fight, as his magical attack can completely stop if the player uses this item at the, the right time. So if you're having any particular trouble with that enemy, then it might be a very nice idea for you to run along and get yourself the Silver Pendant. The second to last item on our list is the Crest Key, which is found within the dark parts of Ulysseal Township, and will unlock the door near the arena where the player fought Autorius. Behind this door is Hawkeye Gove, who you need to speak to in order to obtain one of the items on our list, as you may remember. There will be in-depth look at how to obtain each item coming up very, very soon, so do keep an eye out for that, but for now we'll move on to the final item, which is the Arch Tree Carvings. Again, usable items found throughout the Artorius of the Abyss DLC. Well, each one, when used, says a word, and apparently they serve no real purpose other than enjoyment, and are basically a fun little novelty item. So, overall, a pretty nice collection of weapons, armour, and usables. Some dud items, to be sure. The uh, bloated head items especially didn't sound all that awesome, but I suppose you can't have a winner on every single one, especially on a game as notoriously difficult as Dark Souls. Hopefully, though, this will give you some idea as to whether or not this DLC will be worth your money, and hopefully uh, you found this video somewhat informative and entertaining. Anyway guys, thank you again for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you do, please do give us a like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.